hooked up with a boy. And that's all I have to say. Good evening, Heather Lusardi, 89 Old Farm Road. I actually asked my junior and freshman to come, but they had to do homework tonight. Um, my junior's a student athlete, they're both student athletes, but she got home from practice at six o'clock. If it's a game, she'll get home at nine or 10, three sport athlete. And if she didn't have option two, even my, my son who's in college, I have another one at William Mann, and if they don't have that option too, that is detrimental to their de-stressing and just taking that sort of great breath every day, every night. Yes, do I let them take sometimes a year study hall or a half year study hall, but to that question of can you choose your half, your semester, um, study hall, you cannot. My daughter has put in, and my son who's graduated, that, um, for a half year study hall, hoping to get it the time that they had their sport and didn't have option two because they had driver's ed or they had their health, but they didn't. So there were definitely years or semesters that they had two study halls because you cannot choose the fall or spring option. And that hopefully, if you, if through the curriculum, you can now choose, Mr. Krause, um, maybe that would, that would also help, especially sophomore year, if you're deciding to do driver's ed and, and health right next to each other, what are you doing for your fall and winter sport athletes? That's really going to be a problem, okay? And, and this is not, you know, there are plenty of student athletes out there that maybe they're in bed at 10 o'clock, but I take my daughter's glasses off and she's not this AP honors kid, but I close her, I close her laptop in her bed at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And again, without that option too, it is so, so important. That's... Oh, I have one more thing. On your slides, and we love Coach Clark, um, we love all of our coaches, and if they're all as enthusiastic as Coach Clark and, and um, Coach Tracy here with our students, we have the creme de la creme if they're as enthusiastic in the classroom, so I do hope they all are like them. But with the drunk driving and the kids who are drinking and driving, they're not. They're Ubering, they're putting those keys no one is driving, no one is drinking and driving, and these kids are not getting in those cars today. Not happening. So, thank you. Um, hi, uh, my name is Andy Moss. Uh, I live at 62 Ramapo Drive. Um, I was a student at Mount Prospect and WAMS, and now I'm a ninth grader at Ridge. Um, I swim on two teams. Uh, the Somerset Hills Y is my club team, and I swim for Rich. Uh, the Y club is year-round in the evenings with, with many meets on weekends, and Ridge is marking periods two and three with meets on Tuesdays and some Thursdays. Right now, my day starts at 6 a.m. to catch the bus, but soon, like many swimmers, I'll be waking up at 5 a.m. or earlier to do an additional swim practice at the Y before school. At school, I take three honors classes. I like them, but that's a lot of homework and tests and fast-paced learning. I only take one elective each semester so that the four days I don't have science lab, I can have an additional study hall. The option two study hall is very important to my day. My grades and my stress level improved as soon as Project Adventure ended and I could use option two for a study hall. I use it to meet with my teachers, study, and get homework done. I appreciate study hall like I appreciate swimming. Both relieve stress and help me balance my busy life. I try not to study during lunch because it's a rare time to talk with friends, eat, laugh, and breathe. If you take away the option to study hall, then many students and I will have to study during lunch, which is, 
which is wrong, stressful, and depressing. Um, after school, I do not have a lot of time for homework because of swimming. During marking periods two and three, I have both Ridge swim team and the Y. On the days I don't have a Ridge meet, I get home from school at three, but by 5.15, I have to get ready for Y practice, so I only have about two hours to do all my homework. For the Y team, we start at 5.45 and we end at 8.30. I get home just before 9 p.m. It's very important to me and my family that we eat dinner together. So that means that if I'm going to study more at night, then I'm up late. If you take option two, if you take away option two, I will be up late more often, and this will make things a lot more stressful. I wish we could start school later, and I'm not alone in wishing this. If we cannot start later, then you should at the le very least be saving the option two study halls that your current plan takes away. Weekends are also busy for me and for a lot of students that play sports and use option two. I usually have Y, pra y team practice or meets both days on the weekend and many weekends all year. And sometimes I swim twice a day at meets I make finals, which I, which, which I often do. I need the option two study hall to make my schedule more manageable. So do many, many other students. Grades are important, as you know, and Ridge is hard, as hopefully you know. So many of us work hard, but we have limited time after school to fit everything in. Please do not take option two study hall away for an entire additional marking period for 10th and 11th grade. Please consider a compromise and create better alternatives for scheduling additional health and SEL. Please use your experience, age, and wisdom to accept these alternatives, or please come up with a less stressful plan. One idea is you could put SEL into the end of each class of driver's ed and CPR. I've heard that a lot of students are on their phones at the end of each class. This could be spent on SEL and health. Another idea is that you could make SEL and health a mandatory elective during high school, like personal finance, so that students can take it where it best fits during their schedule. Your current plan is not okay. In 10th grade, you are eliminating option two for first and second marking period, when students are trying to get used to the new school year. In 11th grade, students are adding standardized testing and college visits to their busy schedule and their stress. Please, <laughs> Please do not eliminate the option two study hall for the entire second half of 11th grade. Your current plan will not give students the tools they need for coping, social, and emotional skills. Instead, your plan will make everyone more stressed and not in a position to focus on SEL and health. Please find a balance just like we're trying to do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Margaret Otash. Hopefully I'll be quick because I've got to pick up my daughter at basketball. Um, I live at 59 Oakley Street. She's going to be coming into the high school next year. I have a junior um, that's going to be a senior. And option two is enormous for him. He has a very rigorous schedule, not only this year but last year. And absolutely have tried to fit study hall into some of which way he can have his schedule. He has, for example, this year, he has um, an AP Chem and an AP Bio, um, AP Chem and an AP Physics class, so which chews up a lab for two days during the week. So he's only got study hall three days a week. So he's trying really hard, like that boy said, to plan his schedule so that he has a study hall that he can pick. 
and not to mention the fact that he wants to do some electives, whether he takes intro to law or engineering or any of those classes. He's not gonna be able to take any of those classes because his schedule is so rigorous. Without having an option two, he's not gonna be able to take those particular electives. Um, and again, he's an athlete that runs three seasons out of the year, so there is no way for him to figure out what, you know, you know, what's the best option for him. Um, so I think if you eliminate option two for those kids who are really trying hard to pick an elective, um, you know, choose some classes that they, you know, want to take on their own experience, I think it'll be a detrimental to, to kids like that. I mean, that kid studies five hours a day as it is when he gets home from school. And if it wasn't for that option two, he'd be up till two o'clock in the morning studying every single night. So please don't take away that. Hi, my name is Lisa Richter. Um, I live at 63 Juniper Way. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I appreciate all the thought um, that is focused on our children and their well-being. Um, but I'm actually coming at this from an emotional side, so you do have to bear with me a little bit. All right. Um, I have a rich sophomore and an eighth grader. For those that don't know me, I do not rock the boat. I, I, because for me, I've got to balance work my family and caring for my parents and my in-laws, as well as the fact that this is just a moment in their time. That if this is what you, you're seeking their best interests in mind, you're trying to do that. But I just can't be quiet this time. This one, as simple as it may seem, and some may say, what is the big deal? It is truly upsetting to me and directly impacts my kids. We live, as you said, in a very high-performing school district. And for my child, who has learning disabilities, and my daughter, who has health issues, um, have to face day in and day out hearing about how well others are succeeding. AP this, honors that. Um, college prep, oh, I'm, I'm preparing. I gotta make sure I get all these things done so that I can get in the college of my choice. My son needs two study halls to just survive. He needs two study halls. Do you know how hard that is as a parent? I graduated. I walked through the ridge doors in 1990. Proudly. I became valedictorian in my college. I got my master's, and I've had a successful career. I have watched my son's self-esteem be completely eliminated. Because the moment he walked in through this door, he did not feel good enough. He did not feel he could keep up. He is an athlete. He does play hockey. That is the one thing that keeps him from saying, I'm just going to get my J JED. Like, I love this sport, and it gives me a sense of self-worth. The rest has taken it away. We see a neuropsychologist. We do all types of therapy. I drive down to Red Bank, and he would hate me for telling you all this. But I feel so strongly about it because I have seen my son disappear. He meets in study hall with his teachers to just, again, pass. He misses eight and nine sometimes because of his hockey the bus has to leave early. I have asked in his IEP not to have academic classes in the afternoon, but they can't do that. They have to fit all these students' schedules together. So he uses those two periods, and often lunch. So that's three, just to get to survive. So I really implore you, when you are thinking through this, to understand there is an emotional side and a big stressor on those kids with learning disabilities and other issues. Um, I, I just, you can see I'm actually shaking. I resent comment about a bad attitude that parents have who wrote. I didn't write yet. I wanted to come here to hear what you had to say, and I wanted to come to explain where I'm coming from personally, and how it, this will really impact my child and my other daughter. So I appreciate your time. I implore you to please think of this when you are factoring in these changes to the curriculum. I really do. Six weeks for first grade and CPR. I'm confused a little bit about that length of time. Um, I got trained for first grade and CPR as a coach. I've actually performed that at my work on an individual. 
That took me three hours. Um, are you training them to be EMTs? Are you giving them that type of certification or ability to be certified? Otherwise, I don't understand that. And, and if this is implemented, I just wish you'd reconsider the timing. I know I'm never giving up on my child, ever. So I resent that implication that the timing of it isn't important. The timing is most kids are resorting to drug and alcohol use to self-medicate themselves because of the stresses in their lives, because of what they're having to deal with and their sense of self-worth or self-esteem. Put that into eighth grade when there is still a little bit of um, the skill sets or the ability to not worry about your GPA or your academic studies aren't that hard at that level. Or do it in ninth grade. Do it all in ninth grade. Let these kids have the skill sets for the next three years, not at a junior, junior year when they're trying to get ready for school and just, again, trying to survive. So again, thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. Stacy Irvine, 42 Mount Erie Road. I'm going to come from the other angle. Um, I have one child who's an athlete who absolutely, like her son, needs that extra study hall because he would not get by without it. But you're going to hear from a lot of parents of athletes right now, so I'm going to talk about the other side because my other child is not an athlete. That child is going to lose gym. Now, I know you're talking about adding in a little bit of movement as that seems like just a little tidbit and not really the main thrust here. Exercise is a proven stress reducer. It's a mood elevator. PE class gives kids a movement break during the day, a chance to exercise and unwind. And since sports in our town are really, let's face it, quite competitive, not every kid gets a chance to play. For the kids who have been... Thank you. For the kids who have been left behind by competitive organized sports, PE class is their only chance to be part of a team, their only chance to play. My son loves PE, he'd much rather be exercising than sitting in health. And by the way, I agree with everything Maddie said because I have a senior and he said that in health they watch movies, they don't always fill the whole period and I'm not trying to like diss any of the teachers here because I know you have a hard job but there is extra time there that is not being used. During health, Every year, for that marking period that he's in health and not in gym, he comes home every day grumpy, edgy, depressed, stressed out, because he has to sit in that class and not get to go to the gym and play. He loses the time to exercise, his mood gets worse. When the marking period changes, he's happy, because now he's back in gym. Life gets better for all of us. I know they've outlined a lot of lofty goals, but you can't dismiss the vital point that by adding an extra health, you are taking away exercise for half the year. For these kids that aren't on teams, they need that. Okay, since I'm up here, guess what? I got a couple other things to mention that are also on topic, but a slightly different angle. We have to discuss some other problems with the health curriculum. My senior just finished the Family Living Project in Health. They talk about parenting, family, stuff like that. I don't know if any of you have recently looked closely at the projects and the handouts for this unit. Are you aware that students are assigned a project about either birth defects, adoption, or IVF? Let me read the description of the birth defect project. We are sorry to inform you that your child may have a birth defect. For the assigned project, answer the following questions. What's the cause of the birth defect? Can it be detected prior to birth? Can the birth defect be prevented? What are the symptoms? Then the students are handed a sheet that lists the birth defects. First, the phrase birth defect is outdated. Defect carries a negative connotation that implies deficient or inferior to others. It demoralizes people with disabilities. Second, the list of conditions is problematic. While some of them are in fact congenital, meaning existing at or dating from birth, not all of them are. Let me read the list to you. Down syndrome, which by the way is spelled wrong on this handout. Muscular dystrophy. Sickle cell anemia, diabetes, spina bifida, Tay-Sachs, fetal alcohol syndrome, cystic fibrosis, maternal smoking, Rh factor, and cerebral palsy. 
Calling all of these birth defects is not only insensitive, it's factually inaccurate. And then the descriptions of some of these conditions contain inappropriate language and multiple errors. The description of Down syndrome includes the R word. This is 2019. How can anyone justify having the R word in print? And worse, handing it out to students and making them memorize it for a test. We should all be ashamed. And by the way, it was on a test. <laughs> There are students in our schools right now who have many of these conditions that were listed as defects. There are students in our schools right now who sat in health class and listened to their disability being described as a defect. How would you feel if you were sitting in class given a handout that calls your condition that you've had for your entire life a defect or calls your condition brain damage, which is what appears in the description of cerebral palsy? How would you feel? There are more sensitive words that can be used to describe all of these conditions, and I would argue these conditions should not be put on a list like this at all. And can we please remove the sentence, we are sorry to inform you your child has a birth defect. We're talking about children, real children, real families. Real families who are living with disabilities and medical condi conditions do not want pity, they want acceptance and support. Then, if you didn't get assigned the birth defect but you got assigned adoption, let me read that to you. We're sorry to inform you, you're not able to conceive and we'll have to look for alternative methods to have a baby. How do you think the kids feel who are sitting in that class who are adopted? We're sorry. Being adopted does not require sympathy. Being adopted does not make you less. When were these handouts written? What is their source? Can we please replace them with sensitive language and factually accurate information? Can we please put our children first? Why are we even talking about teaching additional health classes and additional social emotional skills and health when currently staff members are either not paying attention to what they distribute or worse, maybe they are paying attention but they don't understand that it's offensive. Thank you. James Vopel, Evergreen Place. I'm here this evening, uh, thank you Stacy. I'm gonna piggyback on some of her comments. Um, I'm here this evening to express concerns about the outdated and unacceptable curriculum content being, sought, uh, being taught in these senior health classes at Ridge High School. Attached for your review, which is being disseminated at this time, is a copy of a letter that we've emailed to Mrs. Fox and copies of the health class handout on birth defects and the family living project assignment that have been disseminated to students. The documents reflect severely antiquated language, such as mental retardation, which was stripped from federal health, education, and labor policy in 2010 when President Obama signed Rose's Law. The accepted language is intellectual disability. <laughs> These documents perpetuate stereotypes of the disabled as devalued members of society. To be clear, it is blatant ableism. Ableism characterizes a person as defined by their disabilities and as inferior to people who are non-disabled. They also contain inaccurate information. Down syndrome, for example, affects just the 21st chromosome, not the 21st and 22nd chromosome. It is also Down syndrome, not Down's syndrome. People first language is nowhere in these documents. You don't say the Down's kid, just like you wouldn't say the cancer girl. It is a child with Down syndrome and the girl with cancer. This type of information is basic and foundational. Why aren't you teaching this to our students? The documents given to students are also biased and framed in a harsh light, depicting disabilities as our differences as a bad outcome. In the assignment, disability is actual, actually referred to as the problem. People with disabilities are not the problem. They lead lives worth living. However, nowhere in these documents is this truth presented. I don't care that the teacher crossed out the portion of the assignment either. It apparently matters so little to anyone in curriculum and instruction that this document has somehow managed to survive and has been photocopied over and over again for what must be at least two decades. 
Lumped together on the page of birth defects are examples like fetal alcohol syndrome and maternal smoking, which represent lifestyle choices along with their possible consequences and outcomes. They are presented right along with other birth defects, which are actual true genetic conditions. So to be factual and for the record, the mother of a child with Down syndrome or cystic fibrosis does not do anything to cause their child to be born with these conditions. But the current curriculum content carries the message that she does. That no one has questioned these documents is startling. It is irresponsible. You are teaching the students, but it seems like you're the ones that need the lesson. You must hold yourselves and all of our district educators to a much different and much higher standard when it comes to seeing, accepting, and including people with disabilities. You incorporated transgender you incorporated transgender material into curriculum that we presume is current and appropriate. Why would you continue to foster beliefs that towards people with disabilities that are so antiquated, damaging, and discriminatory? You are teaching and influencing young minds after all. We posted these documents on social media on Sunday and we've been flooded with replies. Heavyweights in the disability community, national policy advocates, and dozens of parents, educators, and administrators, all who found it to be wholly inappropriate and so outdated that several questioned what part of the country we lived in. So we call on you to do three things. One, immediately review the entire health curriculum content and pull all outdated, inaccurate, and irresponsible content from classes disseminating this information. The current assignment must also be scrapped. Two, replace the current curriculum content with up-to-date, positive, and accurate information regarding birth defects and genetic conditions. The assignment could instead discuss how well people with disabilities adapt to the world around them and how much better they could adapt if non-disabled people's views of them weren't so narrow, inaccurate, and limiting. There is an innumerable real-life examples of people with disabilities living full and meaningful lives, and even wildly successful ones at that, that we could direct you to. Three. Meet with us to discuss ways we can work together to address other areas where the district must shed their dated perceptions of disability. Our district needs to willingly undertake a paradigm shift. You would never get away with treating an African American or transgender student with such blatant discrimination, disrespect, and disregard. We expect you to stop treating students with disabilities like second class human beings and have contact with the New Jersey Council on Deve Developmental Disabilities for guidance. We look forward to meeting with Mrs. Gray, the Curriculum Committee Chair, and Mrs. Fox about uh, further discussing these issues and about the senior health course revisions. Thank you. Good, ev good evening. My name is Emma Vopel. I am in fourth grade at Oak Street School. I want to speak to you tonight about what this means to me. My mom and dad explained to me and my sister and I what happened. And they showed us the papers that seniors got in the class. I think they're wrong. We don't say the R word anymore. I learned years ago from adults with disabilities that we know that you don't say that word anymore. My sister has Down syndrome. She is smart, friendly, and kind. I love her. I don't know why anyone would call her or other kids who have a disability a problem because they're not. They're great. I'm here to tell you that you need to fix this because I don't want other kids in high school thinking this about my sister or other people with disabilities. It's not right. Please fix this. Thank you. Hello. Boy, it's really hard to speak after that. But. My name is Neslahan Montag. Uh, we live at 41 Essex Place in Basking Ridge. Um, I want to thank you guys for putting this all together tonight. It's clear that you put a lot of work and effort into it. Um, it. It seems that much of it is kind of misplaced, though, because 
We just spent all this time listening to the importance of student health and all the related factors, and I don't think there's one parent in this room that would dispute the importance of student health. I think that the focus should really be on implementing it properly. And, you know, we all know we're in a high-achieving district. We know that we've got these kids who are encouraged to stretch themselves and challenge themselves and do APs and honors and extracurriculars and after-school sports. And to force this on them like this and to throw an extra class at them while at the same time taking away their option to study hall seems like it would have the exact opposite effect of what's intended. I mean, these kids have... <laughs> and it's really not just for the athletes. We've got four boys, two in college, one at Ridge, who's a sophomore, and one at Liberty Corner. And all three of our oldest boys did option two. The two oldest did it not for, well, they did it for athletics, but it was because of forensics, because that was so demanding. But our student here today, at, who's at Ridge today, their hockey schedule and finally, but all these sports schedules are like on steroids now. They have nighttime late practices, weekend practices, daily practices. If they, if God forbid they miss, you know, they're cut from the team or they, or they you know, are, are not allowed to participate in the games and so on. Everyone knows what the pressures are. And to now put these kids in a position where they're forced to not only lose a study hall, but add an extra class on top of it, just seems insane to me. Um, but what I would like to know, and maybe you can share with us, we saw all these slides up there. We saw that you took into account other districts. What other options were specifically considered and explored and rejected? And why were they rejected? Why was the decision made to put these kids in this position and instead get rid of all these other options. We don't know what these options were. I, maybe I'm kind of late to the game, but I'm learning about this very late. And I know that there are a lot of parents in my position who really were not in on this early on and don't know a great deal about it. But you know, I would encourage you to listen. Obviously, there's a big issue here. And not only parents, but students are very unhappy with it. And I know that everyone said they're going to maintain an open dialogue. I mean, this is being foisted on us now, but how far are we in the game? I mean, it's an open dialogue, but what are you going to do to take into consideration all these concerns from parents and students going forward? Um, sorry, I didn't really prepare anything. I'm just thinking, but anyway, that's it. I just hope that you keep an open mind and really really work very hard to explore other options because our district is deserving of it and these kids are under enough stress as it is um, and they really, re that option to study hall is critical for their well-being. Thanks. Craig Lips at uh, 9 Morrison Street. Um, I'm sitting here and I can't help but appreciate how big the gap is between the presentation that was provided on the rationale, including a slide on uh, counter arguments to the concerns of parents versus everything that I'm hearing sitting here today. Nobody is questioning the importance of wellness. It seemed from the presentation like there was uh, uh, like that was a cause of the concern. The only concerns that I'm hearing sitting here today are one, the current curriculum is outdated, and two, there's not enough. The notion that th this is an extra study hall, because that's how it was presented, this option two, it's not an extra study hall. Time is finite. These are, this is the time that the kids are spending on another school, often school activity that runs late into the evening. This is just, time shifting, it's not an extra study hall for these kids. I completely appreciate that there is not enough time in the current curriculum to cover everything around health. You know what? There's not enough time in the chemistry curriculum to cover chemistry. There's not enough time to cover anything. 
That's why my son is spending his study hall learning chemistry on his own for the test that will be there on Thursday. I think that you've heard some really important actions. We need to relook at the current curriculum. We need to fix those things that we just heard are incredibly obvious and broken. And the other input that we heard from some of the students about what's broken there. Kids have so much free time in driver's ed that they're on their phone. Kids are watching movies that are 15 years old. These are great opportunities to get it right. The other thing I already heard were some great suggestions about taking the right intention that you have and getting the right execution around it, because that seems to be the huge gap. We heard, I think we've already heard some practical ideas for ways that we can recover that time, fix these gaps that we want to get in front of our kids around wellness, and do it in the right way. Um, we heard it from one of the students, Andy Moss. Um, I can tell you, this Wednesday, all of our kids have half a day for the in-service. What a great time to have a CPR in service, right? There are, there are great opportunities for this board to think about the execution. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Sarah Herrera. I live at um, 19 Eaton Place. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. almost forgot where I live. Um, and I think this is an incredibly um, important issue, um, the SEL, the social-emotional learning. I think it's really important that we integrate this within our classes that we already have. It's not a set time. Excuse me, 45 minutes during the day, that's the time. It can be woven into the curriculum, and I think that's important. Um, the other thing that strikes me, I'm a parent of student athletes, is the fact that it's a given that their athletics take up so much time. And I'm curious as to uh, what sort of parameters are set on that. So maybe that can be lessened and maybe lessen some of their stresses. Um, and until that can happen, um, where practices are maybe extended two, three, four hours, games are very far away, and take away some of this time, something's got to give for these kids, and they need this time during the day, whether it's to visit with friends, to meet with teachers. They can't all come in at 6.30 in the morning or stay after school. They need that time in their day, um, and this is valuable time for them. These aren't kids who are slacking off and trying to look for, you know, nothing to do. And whether it is a social time or it's an academic time for them, it's really important. Um, I also, uh, I don't know how far this is. I'm not really clear either on whether this is a done deal. But I am questioning why this has to be graded. Um, these are sensitive issues that will come up for some children. And I'm not sure why this is an important part of their grade. Um, these are... If it's something that maybe I can learn from and they are important topics, I may not be the person who would want to speak and raise my hand and collaborate with somebody, but I can benefit from it. I shouldn't have the stress, if I'm going to take this class, of getting a grade on this class. So just some things that I've been thinking about this. So thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Kristen Gannon for Woodstone Road. Um, I agree with what everyone else said about how incredibly important it is that we do address these emotional issues and social issues um, more than we are now, but from everyone else's responses so far, it looks like we definitely have room in the health curriculum already to maybe change some things around. And then also maybe it's just time, you know, we need to, to move forward in our thinking. We have had this financial literacy elective out there that's mandatory for a long time and maybe a few years ago it seemed like that's the best you know everyone out there really needs to be financially literate whatever that means well maybe the time has come that they need more social and emotional literacy so maybe 
get rid of that class, maybe make some, another elective mandatory. Um, as far as adding extra study halls, there's only so many electives that you can take. I do have a student athlete, and he has been wanting to take Woods for a very long time. Um, he was a part of the STEAM program. He's no longer going to be in it because you can't pick electives in that program. You're very, you can pick some, but it is very limited. Um, he needs to take a regular study hall for his athletics. And then also there are just other interests that he has. There are an incredible amount of electives that you can take at Ridge, and there's so many great offerings. So to say that you won't be able to do that because you're, now you have another, you know, it's just it's something else that take, that's taking away from your study time, you're limiting what you can do, what you want to explore, and that's another way to kind of relieve stress. Not everything has to be an AP class. Not everything has to be super challenging. Some stuff like ceramics, you're just trying to blow off steam. So, you know, the option to the study hall, it's just super important. So is social and emotional learning. I'm sure there's a way that you can incorporate both of those things. It doesn't have to be an either or. If, if I can't get to bed until one o'clock in the morning and it's stressing me out that I can't manage my time and I have to get to bed before one in the morning and you say to me, I can help you with that. I can help you manage your stress and I'm gonna start talking to you about that at one in the morning. Then how are you really helping me? Because I'm trying to get to bed. So there must be a better way to do it. I need the help, but I also have a larger problem, which is the stress in my life. So there has to be a way that we can incorporate everything without making it a choice, either or. Hi, I'm Jen Donahoe at 126 Dykeman Place. Everyone sounds so smooth and eloquent when they get up there, and then I feel like I'm going to have a stroke, so bear with me. Um, I have two, I have four kids. Um, two, two were here, and they had to scoot uh, for, for school reasons, but they each wrote a little statement, and I'm just going to read the one that my oldest daughter, um, if I can. I don't have my readers, so. Um, all right. Uh, my name is Delaney Donahoe, and I'm a sophomore at Ridge. I live uh, on Dykeman Place. I don't support the addition of a health class. I think I'm a perfect example of the option two athletic exemption because I'm taking advantage of it at this exact marking period. I consider myself to be an average student. I was kind of sad when I heard her read this, but um, actually <laughs> I feel below average often in this district with their standards. For example, right now I am taking chemistry, not honors, just chemistry. And last week, before the marking period ended, I had three games. She plays basketball, go Ridge, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, I left those days around 7 a.m., and I got home around 9 to 10 at night, and the other days I left at 7 and got home around 6 for practice. It's a commitment, a commitment that I love and that my family supports because they believe, like I do, that the lessons I'm getting by playing on my team are so valuable. Lessons that can't be graded or learned in class. Okay, so back to chemistry. Uh, during last week, when the marking period was ending, I was having a ton of practices and games. I also had a chemistry cumulative exam. Uh, chemistry is hard for me. Mr. Stellatano is awesome, but chemistry is still hard. Anyway, thanks to option two, she has two study halls, so she actually takes advantage of the study hall and the extra with uh, option two. Uh, when I got home, at 10 o'clock from my away game Thursday night in Montgomery, I actually felt pretty good, not only from our win, but because I had been studying all week during my extra study hall, I reviewed a bit, and then I went to bed, and I got a 97 on the test. Uh, yay! So it is me, the average student, that you say that you want to make sure isn't falling under the radar, and I'm telling you that option two is helping me. I can't understand why things would change that are working. If this change were to take place today, I would not have been able to study. I would not have had this, this time. And I am 100% certain that I would not have gotten a 97 on this chem test. Thank you. And I balance that with my daughter, who's in eighth grade, who's coming into the school. She absolutely 
adores her health classes at William Annan. Those teachers, Mr. A, um, I remember her coming home last year, and I actually almost came to the board to tell you this, because he stood up in front of this class with such an emotional and personal story about a friend that he had lost um, at Ridge who had graduated um, from a drug overdose. And Lily came home that day and sat there and said, Mom, I know everybody talks about this, I'm not doing drugs. She goes, I could never do that. I could never do drugs. And I was like, why? And she goes, because I like Mr. A so much and he was so sad thinking that I could make one of my friends so sad like that. I don't think I would, I would do that. So our kids do connect with our teachers in that way. And when they're, when they're sharing stories like that, that's not on the curriculum. That's not share a personal story about loss. Like those are things I think that organically can happen for our kids in their classes if we allow them to, to have the autonomy to do that. So thank you for your time. Hello, Elaine D'Addario, 46 Dykeman Place. You all know me very well. I'm at all your meetings. I'm going to try to get through this, but it's a lot, and I have an email to follow up with so that you'll get more detail on it. But you say you're listening, but yet you don't hear what your community is telling you. Okay? We need balance. We want all the stakeholders to um, be successful, invested, and happy, teachers, students, and parents. By adding two graded health classes during the most stressful years at Ridge High School, it's not the answer. It seems you're trying to answer the call of SEL as well as help teachers who don't love option two during a contract negotiation year, in addition to finding places for health lessons not currently taught, you know, like you discussed, opioids, suicide, same-sex relationships. But those are not state mandated, or they're only suggested. This change affects so many people, like you heard, the, the gym uh, participant, the option two participant. It's not just one group of people. It's a lot of different people that need either movement or that study hall that's very valuable. Movement is powerful. You don't want to take gym away from these, these students or option two. Um, Several researchers have proven the importance of physical activity of students in high school environment. Scientifically, they, these activities have been proven to be as important as doing schoolwork. In fact, exercise can be as effective as an antidepressant. And on the flip side, physical inactivity is associated with development of psychological disorders. So that's something you're gonna take away in the name of SEL, it seems counterproductive to me. Some of us, uh, you know, the, we offer option two, and it's been said that no other district does, and that's false, and maybe not in the same way, but they do offer it. Um, it's been said that the managing of option two's paperwork is a problematic. All I have to say is Jillian Shadis never had a problem. She handled it like a champ. So to that, I say it might be a staffing problem, not an option two problem. It's also been said that these valuable lessons are not being taught at home, so they need to be taught at school. People don't, please don't penalize me for doing my job as a parent and a teacher, which I take very seriously. Um, they are getting this lesson at my home, and if they're not, then shame on those families. Don't hold us, the ones that do teach at home, hostage for their mistakes. In uh, my following up email that I'm going to send to you, I'll show you a day and a week in the life of a typical rich high school student. It's not pretty. Um, that's your majority, the middle student who is lost in limbo in this district and is not well served. The change to the curriculum will be the straw that breaks those, those children's backs. This type of student can't scale back on their work. They're the average student. Option two is priceless for those students, and there are many. All work and no play makes only dull students, not only dull students, but stressed, depressed, anxiety-ridden, maxed out, sad and overwhelmed students clawing to keep from drowning with no end in sight looking for a way out. 
If adding a graded health class to two of the most stressful years in district, junior year is egregious. Um, if that's the answer, then we're not serving them well at all. Some questions I have for you are, are the phys ed teachers teaching these new health classes? Are they certified as specialists in these critical areas that we're discussing here? Can parents opt out? Can their parents opt their students out of these uh, classes if they feel like they do that at home? Why not have more transparency on topics like this? Um, our district is having presentations like this Wednesday um, showing angst in district, but yet we're adding angst in, in extra graded classes. Is this decision, if this decision is not from the Board of Ed, who is pushing it? The curriculum department, the athletic department, the counselor? Who and why are they pushing it if it wasn't a decision that you guys voted on? Since the curriculum is not being created until the summer, can we scrap it and then work on a better option? I know you're timing me, so I'm going to try to be quick. Um, some other options were to weave SEL into the fabric of our school environment. That's what SEL is. It's not to be dumped into a marking period a couple times during their four years here that cover only two grades. It's actually supposed to be part of our, our environment, our lifeblood. <laughs> Project Adventure covers the recommended SEL by the state, so maybe we should work on uh, bettering that project. Uh, having a new health class being optional, uh, maybe some people do want these lessons for their children if they're not getting them home, but some don't. Have the class be pass-fail, do not have it be an extra stress of uh, GPA-weighted grade, even if it's low. <laughs> have an option three as a place for these lessons that you can take. Create parent, student, teacher, SEL committees. Maybe we could all discuss this and really come up. We've got some capable people here. We could really you know, do some stuff together. Lunch and learns I've heard about, study hall seminars. Um, assemblies should be interactive and not just lectures. I have to commend uh, Mr. Krause because I adore him. And he has brought back school spirit and he's put in some great programs as we're listed. I say to you, I hope you don't hold him back or become a you know, don't prevent him from what he's trying to do. Um, he's good at what he's trying to do. I hope that he's not falling into any roadblocks. Um, it's never too late. Um, I believe what you believe, Jen Korn. It's never too late to help these children. But junior year is probably the worst year that we should try to do it. We might want to consider senior year because as she said, senior year, we're still trying to teach them stuff. And if it's never too late, then senior year is not too late either. Um, if you can hear other groups that have come before you, like Gifted and Talented, Diwali, STEM, Martin Luther King Day, and most re recently Chamber Orchestra, all important and all you heard and changed things for, then hopefully you can hear us too here today. Because again, that's all right, I'm on my last sentence, you know me. You say you're listening, but you have not heard what your community is saying to you. Please hear the hundreds of people that have been signing the petition you all know about, 435 last I read, and um, reverse course. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stella Levy, and I live on 54 Sentinel Drive. And I'm here to appeal to not take away option two. I have three kids. One graduated from Ridge, I have a senior now, and I have a daughter in William Annan. And I have three different kinds of children, and I, have, I can share with you experiences from my, my two older ones, where one is in college now, just graduated, and one who is a senior. Um, my senior couldn't come because he's got too much homework. Um, but my, uh, my son in college, uh, who graduated in, in 2017, sent me an email um, when he heard about this, when I told him uh, about this. And um, I would like to read it to you. Hi, my name is Michael Levy. I am currently a sophomore at Cornell University studying mechanical engineering. 
I graduated from Ridge High School in 2017. As a Ridge athlete and AP student, I really appreciated the Option 2 study hall because I really needed that extra time that it provided. This was especially true during the fourth marking period when many students are preparing for AP and SAT subject tests. For someone like me with two lab classes in one year, I only had my scheduled study hall once per week. So option two was my only consistent study hall. So for those people who have two labs, four days of it out of the one week is in a lab, so they only get one study hall. I recall needing the extra time so badly that I would work all throughout study hall and then continue during lunch, and many of my friends had similar experiences. In a world where time is scarce and kids are so pressured to push themselves, both athletically and academically, giving them option two is the least we can do. In his case, he was a rich athlete. And we all know our kids get up at 5, 5.30, and right after school, he goes right into practice, and whatever sport he was doing, if it's an away game, by the time they come back, it's like 7, 8, 9. And, and then they have to do all their homework with all their AP exams and tests. And at one point, I, I think he was taking all, I, I've lost track. I mean, he's one, of, he's one of those kids that is so motivated and school does come easy for him. And yet I was really surprised. I was really surprised when he sent me this email. I did not tell him what to write. Um, these kids have longer work days than most adults I know. Than most all of you. They have a longer day than me, and they have a longer day than my husband. And these kids are teenagers. Then let's talk about my other son. My other son is very different. He's not ac as, as academically gifted as my older son. Um, he has stress, he has anxiety. Um, he uses option two to actually de-stress. He needs it because he does athletics and he needs it, and he has, he has to choose between um, de-stressing and getting exercise, or getting sleep, or studying for the test, or having family time. And that stresses everybody, not just him, it stresses me, it stresses my kids, it stresses my dog, it stresses everybody, because we can't even get family time. Um, and I worry for my middle school daughter, who's gonna be coming up. She's seventh grade now, and I can't imagine her going through this and I see two different kids, and they both really use and need option two. Um, so I really would like for you to consider, uh, there, as, I, as many parents here have mentioned, there are many options. Um, and in junior year is, is probably the worst year to actually have it. Um, <laughs> even with someone who is academically gifted, I mean, he's actually even commented that his workload in Cornell is, is you know, at par, maybe even lighter in some semesters than his workload here um, in Ridge, which is it's really, it's crazy, it's crazy. Um, and we do appreciate and understand the importance, and we all want mental health, um, but I think it's, it's really not, it's, this, is, this is the wrong solution. Um, and when you're talking about educating the students, you know, maybe we should educate, you know, our athletic, program is wonderful here. Um, it's one of the best. And, and definitely the academic. That's why everybody flocks to Basking Ridge. Everybody knows that. Um, and that's why we're here. Um, but maybe we should take a look at maybe educating our teachers, our coaches in the sports programs, and maybe teach them and train them to help our kids uh, balance all this work and, and maybe give them a break so that if they have to skip practice one day for a test because they're too stressed or whatever, that they don't penalize them or bench them and for, for you know, and punishing them and bench them and not being able to play a game because they missed a practice. I mean, my kids, and they're good kids, they've had to miss family vacations, um, um, you know, miss studying for a test or maybe compromising because they didn't want to miss their sports. These kids want to do everything and they want to, and as, as men people mentioned, sports is really important. Um, my son, my son says, I, I, have to, I have to shoot 
basketballer. I got to go to distress. He actually physically has to move. And um, he has, he definitely tells me, tells me in the evening, I, I got to go. Even though it's 9 p.m., he goes to the Y because he needs to, you know, de-stress. And, and it really helps for people who have, you know, people manage stress. I mean, my older son has stress too, but he manages it very differently. Um, so people manage stress differently, and there are people who really, really need stress. And, and if it's not sports, he has to grab his guitar, and he's constantly playing guitar. And in fact, you know, that was, you know, my other son David, he started uh, the 12 Keys Music Club here in Ridge as a way to distress for him and his, his friends to come and just um, um, play guitar and play music, uh, you know, in a very, very, very relaxed uh, environment uh, just to chill. And, um, you know, it's, it's really grown. And they actually had a show last night. You should have seen it. It was amazing. And, and he felt it was a Sunday night, and, but he said uh, and it was a lot of work for him to organize all the shows and gigs throughout town and fundraisers. But he says it's, it's, it's great for distressing. And he says it's, it's a lot of work, but it's so much fun. Man, I, I, I didn't interrupt with the one minute warning this time. But okay. So anyway, um, I, I digress. But anyway... Thank you so much, and I do appreciate all the information that you guys shared this evening. Cho Shear, 16 Tall Timber. So I, um, what I'm about to read is actually not my words, uh, but I'm reading on behalf of Stacey Letty, who unfortunately was not able to come today uh, because she is at a work commitment. So I'm going to read um, some statements that she wrote on her behalf that she wanted the board to hear. When Parents for Change first came in front of this board almost two years ago, you will recall that among the many, many requests we made was a plea for recognition that the social and emotional well-being of our children was important, if not more important, than the emphasis on academic excellence that we have placed on ourselves as a district and on our children. At the time, our student population was clearly suffering from stressors from a variety of sources as clearly shown in the numbers of student deaths within the 12 months and the sharp increase in numbers of students reported to need counseling or more serious mental health intervention as reported by our counseling staff. To be clear, during the ensuing 12 months or so, we made much progress and we were pleased to see many positive changes in the district. We were pleased, for example, to see on the elementary school level a push towards incorporating alternative teaching methods and SEL-based practices throughout the curriculum. We were thrilled when our new high school principal seemed to clearly understand and articulate both the students' needs and our own requests and seemed to appreciate how important they were. And for many weeks, we were asked by this board to give Mr. Krause a chance to get into his position and have some time to acclimate and trust that he would take us in the right direction. And so we backed off a little bit, perhaps too much, because while we weren't looking, somehow our request to incorporate more SEL techniques into our curriculum somehow got translated into adding additional class time and assessments into our st students' day. I implore you to please reconsider. This is not what our kids need. And to be clear, despite the false statements that have been bandied ab about, Parents for Change never advocated for additional classes in the health curriculum. We were asking for new and fresh content that incorporated SEL, updated curriculum, new gym classes, and expanding on ideas like project adventure and community service. Teaching and reinforcing SEL concepts within core content, content helps students engage in learning and developing more meaningful connections to academic materials. There is study after study and many articles that detail how SEL techniques can be incorporated into every classroom. For example, you might integrate into language arts instruction by having students create a double entry journal in which they examine a storybook character's emotions. The students might analyze how these emotions affect the character's relationships 
and any outcomes that materialize because of the emotions. In doing so, students might gain insight into how the emotions affect the character's life, which makes it easier for students to reflect on how their own emotions impact the world around them. In science, you might teach and reinforce biology concepts by having students grow a community garden where they donate plants and fruits and vegetables to a local food bank or other nonprofit. They can work with community members for neighborhood beautification products, projects where they plant trees, hedge plants, and flowers around the community. Teaching SEL alongside core content will not only deepen student activity and learning, but will also help students develop non-academic skills they need to succeed in life. I would encourage you to read the white paper published by the Novo Foundation, which presents a framework for teaching further for broad student skill sets, self-awareness, self-management, social advocacy, and academic um, efficiency in ways that are developmentally appropriate culturally responsive, responsive and academically relevant to high school students. This is how SEL's skills should be incorporated into our curriculum. I did the research. I'm hard pressed to find any SEL class that is recommended by any study paper or is incorporated in any other local curriculum. In fact, creating another class for kids to get a grade in certainly seems to fly in the face of reducing the academic stress by adding to it. To replace, <laughs> to replace a class that encourages movement like gym, and to be clear, a class that clearly lends itself the incorporation of SEL techniques for stress management doesn't make any sense. And to be fair, several of the Parents for Change members met with Mr. Shallow personally to plead for increased SEL programming in the gym and health classes. For two years we asked for this, but let's do it appropriately and not leave the existing curriculum as it is and lay something on top that makes no sense. I'm asking that you please take the time to reconsider to consider the materials, to do the additional research on how to effectively implement SEL into our district, not take the easy way out. Stacy Letty. So I don't know if I have any time left. I'm so, done. Okay. Well, I just ran out, but I've been, Can I just take 30 seconds for myself? Um, so I, I read Stacy's letter, but while we were while the um, you were going through the curriculum, I took a picture of the junior um, uh, curriculum that was scheduled for next year and sent it to my sophomore daughter, who unfortunately couldn't come because she had practice um, for a couple hours today um, and then had to go home and study um, for tests tomorrow. So her, the, when I text uh, revised her curriculum, she sent me the response back saying, a week for um, uh, STD, I don't understand. I've, most of these uh, things that are in here, I've already seen, and I don't think I need a week to understand contraceptives and another week to understand STDs. I already know that. So I'm not sure why at a junior level, marking period three and four, my daughter would need to know to spend two weeks in gym to understand something like that. To me, you're, I mean, you know, perhaps you need to uh, explain to us what exactly, you know, these additional pieces that you're gonna add, but that does not sound to me productive um, at this point and this level. So I think just going back to Stacy's letter about let's do this right, if you're going to increase the SEL, you know, it's not about just expanding these, um, you know, some of these activities for the sake of doing it. I think you really need to put some thought into why and if a sophomore is, you know, saying this to their parent, um, you know, for junior year, I'm, I think everybody, and I asked the board to really consider um, that because to me that is just a waste of time. Um, and I'd rather that my daughter be spending that time in a study hall 
where you know she's in an honors chemistry class right now, which I have to pay a tutor um, each week um, to. You know. So you know, there's lots of issues, but thank you. I appreciate. I know this is a volunteer position for you know most of the people here. So thank you for your time. Hi, um, Alicia Martini, 118 Blackburn Road. Um, I had a whole bunch of prepared statements, but I'm just going to keep it short and just focus on one thing. Um, over the weekend, uh, through email, a board member had given the figure that 75% of the students get A's in health. And um, it's a number I'm assuming they were given by the administration somehow. Um, and they were using that as proof that adding an additional health course would be no big deal. Um, and my point, I guess, is instead of focusing on that 75%, we should be asking about the 25% who don't get, who don't get A's. And 25% is not an insignificant number. That's over 400 students. It's an entire grade level at Ridge. And um, my question is, did anyone stop to consider them? An additional academic class with homework, projects, tests, and quizzes that come with it would be a burden for these kids. And by adding this class, at the same time as taking away an option two, you're compounding this burden. Um, for a long time, these middle kids at Ridge, and by middle I mean not your typical Ridge Honors AP kid, um, these are the kids other people have mentioned who struggle and work hard just to be successful in CP courses. These students have felt ignored, overlooked, less than, but it's always sort of just been a feeling. I've never really had it stated in print before, and that's how I took that email. So, um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so by using that statistics as evidence in favor of an additional academic class, I felt this person was saying that this other 25% don't matter. And I find that extremely disappointing and disturbing. And I sincerely hope it is not the feeling of the entire board or the administration. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Lori Kennedy, 124, 124 Penwood Road. Um, I wanted to thank you for the presentation, thanks to the guidance counselors. Um, I didn't plan to speak tonight, but listening to the program, a couple things struck me. One of which was, I'm curious to know why the Ridgewood High School program was chosen, chosen as the one Ridge would like to emulate. I didn't get a good look at the slide and the specifics, but I know several Ridgewood families and their high school children's problems are just as bad, if not worse, than those at Ridge. And from speaking to them, I don't know how their school's health program has helped their students. A quick Google while I was sitting here looking at my phone, I see about four pages of recent um, headlines about going goings on at Ridgewood High School. Very recently, the articles were a culture of bullying reported at Ridgewood High School. Another one was Ridgewood teen skull fractured defending cyber bullying incident, parents suing the school, students stood by and watched. Another one is significant increase in prescription drug abuse, school officials say. And the latest one um, from December was police investigating ap after anti-Semitic um, graffiti was discovered at the school. So my question is, if you're touting Ridgewood's program, has there been significant research done with how their health, wellness, and social education program is working out for them? And if you're looking to put something into place, has enough been considered of what you're taking away? I will tell you, I have a freshman She's in a fall winter sport, and she couldn't wait to have the option or the time, the marking period, to take advantage of the option two that is offered, just to get her stuff done. Uh, today, she was actually homesick, which is a rare occurrence. I, don't, I think this was her first sick day all year. But guess what? There was no lounging around. She was doing her work. She might have slept in a little bit later, but she, all day it was the majority of doing her work. Why, do you ask? Couldn't she get it done over the weekend? She had a school competitive function, took most of the day on Saturday, in fact, all of the day. She also had a school-supported function yesterday. So 
there's just not enough time, even over the weekend sometimes, for these kids to get their things completed for what they need to do for school. So while I appreciate you looking at the health curriculum, um, the option to add in a study hall for these kids is really invaluable to them, and I ask you to please consider it. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Maurice Herrera. I live at 19 Eaton Place, and I'm going to try and not break this. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, so we've got, I've got a freshman in college and three here at uh, Ridge High School. And I'm a, I was a student athlete as well. Um, I, I, played, uh, I played basketball. We, we live in our family a sports and life mindset. So I believe that the coaches have a really big opportunity to really foster the joy of the sport and the extracurricular activity and really play a part in addressing the stresses and the, you know, we're here to talk about stress and their mental well-being, and I completely agree with that. My question is, I have two, I don't have a question, I have, two, I have two suggestions. One is, to what extent are we providing the coaches with guidance on checking in with our kids in terms of what kind of schedule they have during, that, during the course of that week? I have, I have a son, he's a junior, he's taking two APs, he's taking two honors. He, would, he just is really gun-shy about approaching the coach about maybe taking one of the practices off, but... I mean, I manage a team of 40 people. I check in with them and I ask them about what their week is like, how fully loaded their week is, so maybe I can ease some of that burden off of their, you know, off of their plate. So my question is, to what extent are we asking our coaches to approach our kids and help them to manage their time and maybe take some of those stresses off of their plates? Because I, I know from my two sons that have been the students, they have never been approached about what their workload is for a particular week um, or two. And the other is, like, from where I stand, if you don't measure, you don't manage. How much are our coaches being, being surveyed, being um, at the end of a season, to check in to see to what extent our players, our sons and our daughters, to what extent have they uh, felt a feeling of self-esteem being built up and confidence levels being built up? And I, I'm not here to... I'm not here to criticize the coaching staff. I just think that there's a big opportunity. I mean, just look like with me at work, I, my, my, my underlings, my, the, my direct reports, they get checked in on to see like what kind of leader I am, how much I'm fostering self-esteem, how much I'm building them up. I'm asking, they spend a lot of time with our kids. How much, are, why don't we check in, not with us as parents, but with our kids, the, the athletes, to see how much is their self-esteem being built up not in service of chasing the wins and losses, because that is important, but also in terms of building up their life skills, their self-esteem, and their self-confidence. Thanks. Hi, my name is Gina Capizzi from 62 Winding Lane. Um, my son has a scheduled study hall, and option two that he relies on, and Judge him how you will, I think he's a pretty uh, happy-go-lucky kid, and I'd like to keep him that way. He may not be a rocket science, excuse me, a rocket scientist, but um, he enjoys his sports and his school. Um, to kind of piggyback a little bit on the, the coaches, I think he enjoys the, the coaches and the relationship he has with the coaches. Um, I, in fact, spoke to one today um, and thanked him for being an, a support to my son to deal with something unrelated to him, but something that's going on. Um, I value that. I'd hate to see for him to come home and say, I can't make practice uh, because he's got extra homework. He's already pulled out of school um, early for meets and, and games, um, leaving the house often at 7 o'clock and not coming home till 9. He's an active kid. Um, unfortunately, nothing against the teachers, but he doesn't necessarily have that same relationship with teachers that he has with his coaches. Um, perhaps, like some people have said, that you can re-look at this in the classes, the health classes that are going on. Uh, project Adventure, maybe you can cut two weeks to add something, or a week, or I, I don't know, but look at it. Um, CPR and first aid, maybe ask some of your students how many of them are actually CPR and cer uh, first aid certified. There are a lot of them. And that would be a waste of time, as I'm actually thinking about, because my son at 15 
is a certified lifeguard. So to me, that seems like something that maybe they can take outside of the classroom and then come to you with their certification as like this extra outside thing, um, but to make room for other important things. You've given them no flexibility if you add these, these classes um, for the student to fit these topics into their schedule, but rather you're shoving it where you think it necessarily, not where it fits their schedule. Wellness involves releasing endorphins through activity. Taking away a possibility of option two adds homework to be done at home and not allowing them those relationships with their teammates, their coaches, and again, the wellness of the um, endorphins being released. Um, excuse me, I'm trying to go through my notes. Um, and, then, and it's counterproductive because it's elevating the stress. Now, adding in junior year, which we all know is very stressful for the majority of students, sounds counterproductive. You're setting them up to burn out or worse. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember all the pillars of the, the district that the six pillars somebody mentioned, um, but I ask you to care about the students and look this over. Uh, throwing information at students is not how you cure mental health. Respect them, their schedules, their time, their interests, their, um, their activities, and the time that they need. Show them that there are people at the school who care, want to listen and help. You can gain their trust and the trust of the community by providing them with outlets to distress, not taking them away. Example, the option two. Whether they're getting work done or sim simply doodling on a notebook to relax, it's healthy. They may also use that time to seek out counselors, teachers, coaches to distress, uh, to discuss stressors in, in their life. I'm already worried about the lack of time the students get to meet with their counselors regarding scheduling, let alone meeting with them about social or school student relations issues. Allow time for students to seek out help, not make them sit in a classroom. Today, um, oh, like I said, I spoke to a coach today. Sorry, I mentioned that. Um, I think this is a huge mistake. I know we all want what's done best for the kids, and I don't think you've thought it all the way through well enough, and I just hope that you can take a step back before you, you push this into the curriculum. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stella Perna, 105 Tuxford Terrace. I'm gonna put my consulting hat on. When I see a problem, I always look for a solution. And while I appreciate the problem and I see some of the solutions being offered, I feel that we haven't given it our 100%. If you're adding additional classes, is the quantity going to improve the quality more doesn't mean more. Sometimes less is more. When I look at Project Adventure and I look at the first aid CPR, as the young lady mentioned, my students are Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. We do CPR all the time, so they're good to have around. I would like for them to opt out of that. Project Adventure, I ask. What do you do exactly? And it, I know it's a um, faith, um, trust building exercise. I like to see that revamped. Revamp it to teach kids time management. The thing I noticed, and I have twin girls that are seniors, and I have a boy that's a freshman, very different. My seniors are highly academic, and they're also athletes. My son, he could be academic, but um, he's an athlete too, but he's got a different personality. I'm concerned. My senior girls are concerned for their little brother. They see this option to removal being a huge problem for their little brother. So here's what I suggest. Take Project Adventure and relook at it. I've not heard anything positive from my kids. And my kids are pretty straight shooters. They're not prone to hyperbole. I'd say, teach them time management. Teach them what the next four years are gonna be like. Teach them that it's okay to be stressed. Teach them that it's okay that you've got homework. Teach them how to manage the homework. What's due tomorrow, what's due three days from now. They were never taught that. 
Now, I'm a project manager, so time is how I think. When I, my kids, I ask my kids every day, what's the homework look like? And they tell me, in my head, I can quickly calculate what time they're going to bed. And I'll say, okay, what's absolutely due tomorrow? And I have to teach them that. Why am I teaching them that? That should be something that should be a natural course of discussion in the first marking period of high school. Now, regarding all those health topics, whew, some of them, I have to tell you, I, a little uncomfortable. We had a discussion over dinner, and we like to do dinner as a family. I can only describe to you what my husband's face looked like when my daughters explained that a brown paper bag filled with contraceptives was passed around, and every student took one out and discussed it. My husband was shocked. I don't want to promote sex, but I want to have them understand that being careless and reckless results in a life-changing, life-altering alternative. Explain to them the full picture. And please don't wait till senior year. Please discuss this eighth grade, ninth grade, when they can actually use those tools regarding drug abuse. Please do that in middle school. This problem was starting seventh grade. Seventh grade. Now, I run Girl Scouts for the town. I hear about everything. I do my best to make sure these kids stay on the right track. I make sure they go camping. I make sure I know what every kid is doing. And when a kid quits Girl Scouts, I immediately I'm on the phone with the leader or the parents going, what's up? I stay connected because I feel that strongly about it. Do you think I want to be the head of Girl Scouts? Believe me, my house is a mess, my laundry's never done, but these kids matter. These are my uh, kids' k friends, and I intend to see them stick to the straight and narrow, become healthy adults, and the only way we do that is by caring. I'm not just caring about my kids, I'm caring about all the kids. Now, in terms of connections, I would really like to see teachers connect with 10 students Keep an eye on them from freshman year to senior year. Just say, hey, how are you doing today? I feel like there's a lack of connections. Other suggestions, um, I can tell you every time there's a half day, my kids are clicking their heels like leprechauns. Um, teacher service days, I know we're having one on Wednesday. I suggest, why don't the teachers meet in the morning and then have the kids come in later and they can sleep in? That would be an easy fix. Um, let's see, what do I have here? I can't even read my handwriting. Um, do breakfast days. Hey, everybody, get, get to school a little early, and we'll have volunteers, we'll bring breakfast. I don't know if our Mark will like that too much, but just give the kids something to look forward to. I think the joy of learning goes out the window starting in middle school. And once they've been spit out of middle school, they come to the high school and it's like, oh my gosh, another four years. I don't want them to feel that way. I want them to want to come to school. Um, if you want to... Absolutely. Um, one last crazy suggestion. Make the first day of the new marking period a day of non-academics. Focus on social emotional learning. Focus on something fun. So, I'm all for creative solutions, so if you would consider that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm Tanya McCabe from 50 Fairview Drive South. I was the one who wrote it is a waste of time to teach SEL in 10th and 11th grade as a class, which by definition is a process to which children and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. In my opinion, those are all parents' responsibilities from when they are little. And my point was, this should be taught as early as grade school, like Mount Prospect is doing. As for all the other non-SEL things on your slides, I'm sure you all know that drinking, sex, drugs, suicide thoughts, depression, starts early on at WAMS, and this is where this belongs, and where you are losing these kids, these kids, not because you have a missing health class from ninth grade to senior year. 
and lectures from the podium with these classes or with outdated TV programs doesn't work. Bring in real life people who have gone through this and can touch the kids with their personal experience, like Mrs. Clark was talking about, the alcoholic next door, and my kids also came back with um, some things that you did in the, um, in the auditorium where you brought in real life people with real life problems. As for option two, my now sophomore at Lehigh, who didn't even play a sport, needed that to keep up with her honors and AP in 10th and 11th grade. And my current freshman at Ridge also uses it to keep up with her honors class. Thank you. My name is Barbara Don Sizer. I live at 24 Bradford Lane, and I come to you as a grandmother. I um, have lived in the township for over 40 years. My children went through the school system, and now I have other family members in the school system. And I'm well aware of what you're trying to do. I compliment you all for being here and listening to all these wonderful people and their ideas. I think they have some great points about keeping that option too, I'm all for it. But I also want to talk to you if, you, if I may, about the social and emotional wellness, wellness that you're trying to address, which is so needed in this town, because I've known some of the kids that you've lost, and it's heartbreaking. Um, a couple of people mentioned tonight um, that how important sports are to, to their kids and to their de-stressing and their anxiety. My husband was 17 years on the recreation department in town. He was instrumental in getting two of the parks in this town because he knew how important athletics are to children. It is a, a way to get out the ginger in them. It's, they want to belong to something. So um, it's difficult for children that have IEPs and low self-esteem to be a part of the school. They feel outcast, you'll see them eating alone, you'll see them you know, be by themselves, they don't have many friends, but they wanna participate in a sport. And as um, Lisa Richter said, it's important for her child to belong to a sport. And with the statistics that were on your handout, with suicide and opioid addiction tonight, it seems as though we want to keep students in our athletic programs that we have here, not eliminate them. For example, this winter, our track program began implementing cuts for the first time for boys only because of an increasing number of participants. But this year, there were 13 less boys that participated in, in track than last year. Seven runners were cut from your track <coughs> program. Um, and an, um, they implemented a slightly aggressive uh, mile time of five and a half minutes. There were, I think there were seven boys that were eliminated from the track program. These seven boys needed to belong to something in this school. They weren't able to play any other sport. They didn't go to your your, um, the people that, you know, help with mental health, they didn't feel comfortable going, but they, when they put on their dress clothes on a day of a meet, they felt important, even if nobody noticed them. They liked wearing their Ridge Runners shirts, now they can't. Um, these are boys that had participated as freshmen for cross country and track, and were not allowed to continue to train with the team to grow and develop through practice. You, the board, generously budgeted $20,000 for snow uh, removal on the track field because the track program is one of the largest athletic programs at Ridge. Did you realize that the program is decreasing in numbers as your budget for cross country and track has always been an inclusive sport, not exclusive? while still maintaining its competitive, competitiveness. Most schools, such as Bernard's High and Scotch Plains Fan, would do not cut because they believe sub-varsity is a training for future varsity athletes, and they believe in developing the students. In Darien, Connecticut, where my son lives, 
Anyone who doesn't qualify to play in varsity or freshman are allowed to do track because their emotional and well-being is paramount. If a student is willing to commit to a regular six-day training program and maintain the academic requirements, why not allow those athletes to train with the track team? And why not allow them to have an extra study hall period so they can keep up their grades? If they are challenged students, they're going to need that extra time. As Lisa Richter mentioned tonight, some students have difficulty keeping up with the academic rigor of Ridge High. For those who don't fit in academically in the AP classes due to learning disabilities, being a part of an athletic program is the lifeline they need to stay afloat. They look forward to being with a team, to running. As Mr. Stella is already aware of this concern, I would like the board to reconsider the cut policy for the boys' winter and SPRAC teams that the girls don't have one. They don't have a cut policy. And the girls, um, and I'm hoping that if you feel the need that I feel, because my husband and I have always thought athletics are part of keeping kids from doing crazy things, from taking drugs to taking substance ab abuse. Um, they need it. And track should be a place where anybody who wants to run can run. And the coaches should be supportive of those that can't make that 530 cut. I appreciate your time. And I'm with all of these wonderful, wonderful people who want to keep that second uh, period. They brought some wonderful thoughts to you. You have an awesome job, um, and I thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Betsy Ritterford. I'm 25 Queenberry Way. I wasn't planning on speaking tonight because I'm um, in support of almost everything that people have been saying already, so I'm not going to repeat any of that. The one thing um, that I do want you all to notice, and I know you have had a lot of issues come before the board, and in most cases you have people here advocating for something. You had the, um, the example of the orchestra, I'll just use as the most recent one. I haven't heard a single person here tonight advocating for an additional health class. So I don't understand exactly where that's coming from. We all believe in wellness. We all believe that our school needs to be balanced. We all know that our kids are stressed. But it seems like there are so many uh, other ways that we can go about this that's really going to benefit our kids. Because I do believe that you care about the kids. And I know that's what we're all here for. So I'm just asking you to really think and not just make this a done deal, but think about what's really in the best interest of these kids. Because guess what? We do have kids in this district that don't drink. We have kids in this district that don't do drugs. We have kids in this district that aren't having sex. So when I see this curriculum, and I have to be honest, the junior curriculum items did not line up at all with the chart of SEL a week of contraceptives, a week of sexually transmitted diseases. It just didn't line up that this is really what all of our kids need. So I'm asking you to please just not make this a done deal, but really think about who is advocating and who is really saying this is what we need and this is the best way to, to approach it. And listen to the options, that's all I'm gonna ask. Thank you. Kim Carroll, and I live at 26 Lindbergh Lane. I have the pleasure of being the parent of two special needs children from this district, one of whom's already graduated and is off in college, and the other one who is up and coming in eighth grade and will be moving, excuse me, moving to Ridge in, next, in this upcoming September. Um, the eighth grader is also a student athlete, and so um, I see the issue for the extra health classes from a different perspective, not so much for my student who is the athlete, although it's a significant issue for him. He will already have 
a study hall built into his class, into his class schedule without option two. And option two will become a second study hall for him because he is a special ed student. He's in CP classes with in-class support and even with the extra support of the ICS and having a study hall, he's still going to need that second study hall in order to just keep up. He's not in an AP class. He's not in uh, honors, excuse me, an honors class. He's in a regular college prep class and he needs two study halls in order to keep up. And when you take one of those away from him, you're keeping him from being able to keep up just with the rest of the students. I'm not asking, you know, he's not asking for special treatment necessarily. He just wants to be able to keep up with the rest of the kids that are his age. My older son, who's now graduated and in college, he's not athletic because he was born with a brain tumor that disrupted his gross motor functioning and he really couldn't do athletics. But Jim was the only time where he got a break from the academics, where he could de-stress and, and just get away from the constant teaching. And I understand that at this point in time, the, the district feels that the SEL subjects are more important than, um, than the benefits of Jim. But I just want to tell you that for some students, that is not the case. Jim is hugely important to their ability to function in a day. Both of my boys, whenever they have health for the semester, I get calls from the school about their behavior, about their inability to focus, about their inability to do their work because they've lost that outlet in the course of their day for releasing that energy from getting out of their chairs. That's a huge loss for them. Sports aside and option two aside, they're students who need that outlet. And it frustrates me that as a district, we continue to tell those students that they're not important. They're not important enough for us to consider them when we make curriculum decisions. The other thing that I wanted to say is, as a parent of a child who attempted to commit suicide while he was a student here at Ridge, throwing suicide prevention techniques and thought